All right, everybody. So I bet you're really excited to see what wreath we're gonna do tonight, and I'm really excited to show you. So um, I talked about last week when we did our first wreath, I talked about uh, maybe doing some other wreaths, and you guys were really excited about that. And um, of course, that made me very excited too because I love wreaths. I love doing wreaths. I love to incorporate other stamps into wreaths. So um, I wanted to do one for you guys tonight. And this one I'm going to call the Spooky Wreath. And that is this little guy. So isn't this spooky spooky? So it's very, very simple. I'm going to show you how to make this tonight. And um, it's a blast. I only used one color and actually I showed Joel my project for tonight and he suggested doing like a purpley sky. So um, maybe once we get through the project, if we wanna try adding a little purple into the, um, into the sky, we can do that together. What do you guys think? Um, I haven't tried it yet, so I don't know if it will be uh, cool. I trust Joel because he has an amazing eye for color and if he suggests it, then I'm gonna probably more likely than not go with it. So, uh, all right, so let's hope that this flips around because I was having some problems with it earlier and then we will get started. If for some reason it doesn't flip um, and the video cuts out, I'll just start up again. So don't go anywhere. Uh, I wanted to just kind of let you guys know that, okay? So, uh, let's go ahead and get started. I am going to um, grab some watercolor paper and <laughs> we'll flip around, all right? Okay, hopefully, hopefully, cross fingers. Ooh, it worked, okay, great, awesome. All right. So, we are going to get situated here Make sure we're nice and straight. And it's hard to see in this without a glare. So let's just try our best. Okay, so we are going to, Karen says, yes, purple. All right, well, we're gonna try it together. Okay, so here is the project we're gonna make today. And it's this really cute wreath. You can see I put in um, a couple little spider webs in here and just to make it extra spooky. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So uh, I hope you guys have a blast with this. It is so fun. You can do whatever you want around the wreath. I just did, uh, excuse me, some branches and I'll show you how to do that. But by all means, um, just jump in and find some, you know, some things that you think would be cute and go with it. It's, it's really, really uh, a very simple uh, tutorial today, so I think you'll enjoy it. All right, so to begin, we are going to, I'm going to show you what I used, what sets I used for this. So if you want to join, you can. All right. <clears throat> So I'm gonna grab the Watercolor Village set, which uh, was released in fall of 2020. This is a really, really good one. Really, really good one. Love, love this. Um, and actually Ruth Ann did a really neat, uh, um, had a really neat take on the Queen's Watercolor Wednesday with the, uh, um, Simple Scenes, and she did a whole big village in the background. It was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So that one was uh, SKU 5370. And then for the branches around here, I am using uh, this little guy and this little guy. So I'm using both of those branches. All right. Oh, Renee, yay! She says, hi, everyone. This is awesome. I love Halloween. Me too. I want to do another Halloween wreath too. <laughs> okay. And then I have this set, which is watercolor mini foliage. This was also fall 2020 release. And I'm going to be using the two trees as well as this little grass right here. It is super, super cute. 
So this one is SKU number 5372. And then lastly, we are going to use the Bible journaling icon set. And I'm using the two crosses for our little cemetery in the front. So I'm gonna use these. If you've got these, grab them. If you don't have the set, it is so, so cute. Uh, but you could also just hand draw these in if you if you uh, weren't interested in the other stuff. Uh, you could easily just hand draw in the crosses, but if you want this to be really simple, uh, just go ahead and snag this. This one is Mini Accents 2 and it's $53.90. This is a really, really fun set and I actually use this one a lot personally. So I might bring some of these out for some of our wreaths coming up. So if you wanted to snag this one, um, I'm definitely going to start using some of the other stuff in a few of the reads, especially uh, with Christmas coming up. So uh, I will set this one aside and let's get going. Okay, so right now I'm going to grab a, uh, let's see, let's see, what do I want? Which one did I use here? That one. Oh, you know what I used? I used an adhesive uh, circle, a little round here. I'm going to just zoom out real quick. But you could easily use like a three inch die. This is just an adhesive roll that I used. I just snagged it. So I'll take a pencil and I'm going to just draw a circle in here and a couple of you wanted to know how I got the circle because I came in with it already drawn and so I, I thought it would be fun to just show you how I made it and it's just using a circle that you have around you could also have used a little die if you want or um, I also have one of these little guys that uh, moves around and you can you can put your pencil here and then it just turns and actually, my, my very sweet friend Amanda showed me one on Amazon. It's a little bit different style, and it actually um, triggered something in my brain. And I was like, oh, I think I have something like that. So this one's mine, but um, she does have one on Amazon. I could probably find it and link it. Okay, Amanda, if you're on here, would you just link that? I don't know if you're here, though. I didn't see you pop in yet. All right, so I'm gonna take my circle here and also I'm gonna take a little ruler and I wanna angle this just a little bit. And I'm using this just to keep myself on track because really easily my house could be super, you know, way up here and then my little cemetery is down here and then it feels uh, sort of disconnected. So what I'm gonna do is actually take my ruler, so this is straight, and what I'm gonna do is just angle it up just a bit like this, and then I'll draw a very fine line. This does not have to be at a certain angle. It's just for us to kind of keep track of where we're gonna stamp everything. Because so, it's really easy, and actually I did this on my first one, um, it's really easy to get the house up here and then everything just, it, it doesn't work well together uh, because you want it to be really close. You want it to be close together, you know, here's the little shack or the house and then your cemetery and then the moon here. So you want these to be in a good proximity to each other. Okay, so I'm going to take my little house and actually the one I'm using in there in that village set is um, this one. So the very bottom left. This is the one I'm using. And we can probably zoom in just a bit here. And I'll take that number. Um, oh, let's see. I'll take that. I need some watercolor paper. Here we go. I'll take that number N25. And this is the only color I'm going to be using except for that purple sky that we're going to try out, okay, at the very end. And I'm going to show you what it looks like, you know, you'll, you'll see. So it's going to be something like this with the gray. And then if we want to add purple, we can, okay. So I'm going to take that N25 and I've got my stamp off paper right here next to me. So I'm just going to ink this. 
with the N25, and this is a really dark charcoal. I'm gonna stamp this off on my practice paper just so it's not so dark. And then right on this line that I've stamped, or somewhere in that vicinity, doesn't have to be perfect, I'm gonna stamp my little house. And this just keeps me in track, okay? All right, now that I have the little house there, I'm gonna put in my three little crosses and um, I'm gonna take the, the outlined cross first because that's the one in the center. And I wanna set that one first. So I'm gonna ink this with that N25 as well. Okay. And I don't want it to go quite that long. And notice I'm not inking the bottom. I want this to be kind of covered in grass. So if you ink this bottom right here, uh, you're gonna have a line that's gonna compete with your grass. It's gonna be the exact opposite direction as your grass. And so if you just don't ink it, then you don't have to deal with it. Now, the nice thing is, is that this is clear. And so I can take this and maybe I wanna put it right there and notice that line is right there. So it's keeping me real close to that uh, little house. Okay, and then my other, this is the um, filled in cross. So I'm gonna just ink the whole thing on this one cause it's filled in and it will look like it's just being buried into the grass anyway. So I can put that one there. And then maybe I want one that's like only half. So you could do the half one first if you want it. Then you don't have to wipe off the base. And then I'll set this one just right back a little bit. Okay. All right. So now... I'm gonna take my brush, and actually before we do that, I do wanna get in my little moon. So I'm gonna choose, um, I'm gonna choose one of these circles, and I think I used the 4 8 uh, circle. And so I wanna get this um, sort of in a, a good proximity to my little house and to my um, cemetery here. So I'm gonna take that pencil and I'm just gonna draw a circle here. And you do not have to be perfect with this, but you do wanna be very light. So any, any um, pencil marks that you make on your watercolor paper, make sure they're really light so that we can just easily erase them when we finish, okay? Now we are gonna take our brush and we're gonna start uh, filling in some of these shadows. So remember, we only used N25. So I'm gonna get my palette out here. So N25. And that is the only color so far, until we do our sky at the end, that's the only color we're gonna use. So I'll zoom in a bit so you can see nice and close. Let me know if anyone has trouble seeing this. I can zoom in a little bit more if you need it, or if, if needed, okay? So I've got my N25, and I'm just gonna grab a little bit of that color right off the bat, and take that and just fill in this side. So we want this to be kind of spooky, so we're gonna put in some pretty dark shadows in here. And we're just going to start off with that side. Okay, Heather, you have been concentrating so hard. <laughs> Good, I hope you're learning. Oh my goodness, uh, Terry, we'll catch us tomorrow. I wanted to pop in. Oh, you're so sweet. Hi, Terry. Okay, so I'm just going to take that same N25 and I'm just going to darken this side up. I'll do just a little bit on the chimney. Notice I still left just a sliver of white in there. Good, Heather, awesome. Yay. 
Okay, who all caught the queen bees live this morning? Wasn't that fun? Oh my word, she is just so awesome. I just absolutely loved that live. I loved all of the ideas that she gave. I loved that she took the time to do that little wreath, which I don't know if you caught it, but I totally copied her dashes down here. So we are gonna put those into our little project tonight too because I just, I loved it so much. <laughs> okay, so I'm now gonna take that brush and this has no color on it. So I'm just gonna start pulling some of the shadows down into here. And then we're also gonna put in our rooftop. Now, notice I'm not gonna color in the rooftop that dark. I'm just gonna put some color in here just so we know it's a colored roof. We don't need to spend that much time on the rooftop. Okay. But I do notice I'm leaving just a sliver of white around the perimeter of the roof. I just think it looks nice and it keeps everything in its spot. Ginger loved it. Yes, Paula loved it. Norma loved it. Velda loved it. Awesome. Hi, Allie. Welcome. I'm so happy it worked for you today. Allie, is this your first live with me? If it's your first live, let me know and um, we can all welcome you. Okay, so I'm gonna take my brush while the little house is drying here. And actually that reminds me, if anybody is new, if you haven't commented, definitely say hi in the comments. We'd love to welcome you. Okay. All right. Kendra Dots and Bonnie Dashes. Yes! <laughs> Allie, this is not your first live, but welcome back. I'm so happy you're here. Super, super happy. Um, is this the Queen Bee on the Art Impressions? As the Art Impressions? Or is this Leah? I think it might be the Queen Bee based on their responses. Ooh, identify yourself. <laughs> we need to know. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take my brush and just darken up these little crosses in here. All right, Tony loved the live. Cool. Love to hear it. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just darkening up areas along the way, just deepening my shadows because we do want this to have a, just a really spooky, spooky look. I mean, not too, too scary, right? <laughs> but we do kind of want it to look old, like maybe not many people have been here lately. You know, it's, it's kind of run down. So I'm just sort of dropping in some of these little shadows. But notice it's still not as dark as the, the shaded area on the right. Okay, so now I'm gonna start putting in some shadows here and maybe a little hill back here that the little house is sitting on. So I'm gonna grab that N25 and yes it is, it's the queen bee herself. Okay, Ruth Ann, you're so sweet. Yes it does, yes it does. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this N25 and I'm just gonna create this little hill in the background. And it's going to kind of just haze out of the, um, haze out. And I'll take just water because you can see, oh wow, that's really thick color. But once you take water and you start blending it out, it's actually not. It really, really blends well. And you can get a really nice, blend. That's not harsh. So see how I'm just blending that out. And now that's going to set up that background for our little house. Now we do want this shadow in here to be over here. Okay. Heather knew it. <laughs> yes, you did. 
Cindy, hi! Oh, Cindy! She's been at lives before, but this is the first time commenting, you guys. So welcome, Cindy! So happy that you commented and said hi. Uh, please feel free to say hi again. We just love having you. So happy you're here. And please feel free to ask any questions if you have any, okay? All right. So I'm gonna take that brush and notice the majority of the work here is just to kind of set that little house on the hill and make sure that it's got some really nice shadows in here. So that's that's really the biggest thing that we're doing um, right now. We're sort of setting the stage uh, and putting in as many shadows and uh, contrast as we can. So you'll see, I'll come back in with a really, really fine micron tip and uh, we'll really set off some of those, um, some of that contrast, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna take that same N25 and we're gonna start putting in a bit of a sky here. Now I wanna just remind you, when you're doing a sky that's, um, that is longer or bigger, you know, right now our sky is, is really a big part of our piece. So I wanna encourage you, don't stamp in your trees, especially if they don't have leaves and stuff until the very end, once your sky is dry and then you don't have to try to avoid them, okay? So I'm going to take my brush and Velda, welcome Cindy to date night with Kendra and crew. <laughs> yes, Velda. <laughs> that is too funny. Okay, I'm going to take that N25 and I'm going to start filling in some sky around the little moon that I put in, okay? So it's just going to be around here. Now, because this is the same color, I want you to pay attention to this, as the little hill we just made, we we absolutely have to have a white uh, cushion in between the sky and the hill, okay? We absolutely have to. So, and what I mean is just a little sliver of white. That's all we need to have is just that little sliver of white in there and um, that will differentiate the ground from the sky since it's, it, since it's the same color. Now, if we put in the purple, um, I would still recommend leaving a bit of a sliver, but um, it's not as, uh, you know, necessary <laughs> because you have a whole nother color. All right, so I'm just filling in these uh, the sky area don't don't feel like it has to be perfect um, you're basically just coloring you're you're highlighting the moon by not coloring it <laughs> because we want it to appear kind of white and that it's kind of glowing through the fog or the sky in the background okay So we are getting our little moon put in. Just remember, we are gonna, going to erase that circle line. So you do wanna make sure that your color comes right up to the edge of that. I'm gonna grab, I'm just noticing my little palette was not in frame, so I'm sorry. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that N25 again and just start building up this color. Now, if I have color, um, along the edges already. I don't have to make all of the color this dark. Okay, I can, as long as I have some light there, enough that is darker than that white in the moon, then I'm good, okay? Hi, Janet, hello. Good to see you. She is listening on her drive. Oh, I know Facebook is kind of spotty, so I apologize. Um, if you guys have any troubles, let me know and I can check my system and make sure it's not me, okay? Okay, so I'm just going to keep moving around here, just adding darker areas around here. Now, I'm not circling around this. I'm not making a circle like this, okay? I am just coming up to the edge of that moon and then moving away from it. So eventually we're going to put in some clouds through the middle. OK, 
okay but I'm not circling this you can that would also be pretty cool um, but for this one I want it to be sort of a cloudy foggy look okay so notice we just we spend a lot of time on details like this and then I can bring this in and kind of haze out some of these stronger lines and you can see I'm getting a really nice variation of dark and light or dark and light color okay <gasps> Susan first live everybody please welcome Susan so happy you're here oh my goodness you and yours make awesome stamps and video tutorials thank you that's so nice of you my goodness appreciate those kind words welcome welcome feel free to ask any questions you might have okay all right so I'm gonna take that N25 now I'm gonna start bringing it through the moon just ever so slightly okay just bits little bits here and there okay hi D that's okay don't worry you are here in and I am just happy about that okay so I'm just bringing these in all right spooky spooky huh starting to come together now if you're just a beginner and you're not sure how to do the little um, the dabbing for the sky you don't have to do that you can do um, something like this if you're not sure if that's if that's um, maybe a little too intimidating for you right now if you do just a circle if you do a circle like this okay and you just want to take your um, color that that same N25 or whatever color you want to do for the sky and if you want to just do this all the way around and you want to sort of um, fan it out like that okay you want to sort of fan it out so it's has um, it's not just a block you can do this and this is also really fun all right and then once you get once you get to those edges or once you get all the way around go back over the edges with just water and you're just going back and forth you're going back and forth and just blending out those edges and then what you can do is take a little well let's make sure that we're all the way to the edge here what you can do then is take your color and just come through just like this so that um, you're not having to do so much of the uh, dabbing okay Martha's also new welcome so you can totally do this as opposed to the dab 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 sky okay so if this is easier for you if this one um, if this one's easier just do that you don't have to do all the little details in the sky okay all right okay so now I am going to take that um, that micron. I use a little micron. So I use a little micron number one. And um, I'm going to use this to just put in some contrast details into my little picture here. I'm going to take that and color in all my windows really, really dark. So it's got to be black. If you're going to use this N25, now if you're using a different color, it doesn't have to be black. It can be something else. But if you're using N25, your little marker or your little your pen has to be black. And I really, I love the Micron because it just gives such a dark black. And the, um, the detail tip of this, uh, 01, is just very nice. Okay, so I'm going to put in gonna give this a really dark look 
I'm gonna put the contrast in here, which is nice and dark. Just turn that a bit. So this is getting Okay, do you see that contrast? How much that uh, offsets the shadows and makes the highlights brighter and the shadows darker, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing on my little crosses here. So I'm just gonna outline the areas that I want to be shaded in. And I'm doing this with the Micron because um, I already put a few in with my brush and it's just really easy to go in and use that detail tip and get at that super, super dark uh, look. So I'll come back here, darken these up. And it doesn't have to be the whole thing, even if you wanted to darken up just a little bit, that would be totally fine. Okay. Let's put in our little teeny tiny grass in here. So I'm gonna take this tiny, this really tiny accessory grass from that, um, that set, the mini foliage set. This is the new one from 2020, um, 5372, this tiny grass. And I wanted to show you the difference between the teeny tiny grass and this like mini grass. So this is the teeny tiny grass that um, we use over and over and over. And that is the mini grass. Look how much tinier that is. I just, I love the option to have a smaller grass because although this is usually small enough, sometimes it's not. And so I really like to go in with the mini one on projects like this. If you don't have this set, it's kind of a must. It's, it's just, it's an amazing set. And if I really wanted to go in and do, you know, some crazy backgrounds, I could use this on the hill. I could take this and maybe put like a spooky tree over here or a bush or something like that. So this one is just a really great set. Okay. So N25 again, and I'm just gonna ink that set. Uh, which sets, oh, Allie, this one, the one I'm using right now, this one, that's the mini one, the tiny one. That one's watercolor mini foliage 5372. And then the other teeny tiny grass is foliage set one 4051, and that's this one, okay? So I don't know if these are like actually to size. I don't, I'm not sure. Um, but if I show you the actual stamps, you can really see how much smaller that mini one is. It's just tiny. Okay, I'm gonna take my N25, no problem. And I'm just going to start stamping in some of these little grasses and make this look like it's almost on a hill of its own. Okay. Isn't that nice? That teeny grass is just so awesome. So I'll take my brush and you could use your number one for this if you wanted. The number four is a touch big and you know, I'm, I don't like saying that because I like using the number four for just about everything, but I think I am going to just grab that number one and um, I can show you how to use it. Let's see if I have access to it here. Yep. Um, oh, it looks like my tip is stained, but that's okay. So this is the number one connoisseur. It's tiny, this little tip. And actually, let me show you when it's wet because the other one is wet. And it'll be a good, um, it will be a good comparison of how these look and the size difference. So this one is the number one that I'm gonna use. And then this one is the number four, which I use most often. But do you see the difference there? That is a huge difference. So when you're going in for these really tiny 
um, you know, elements, it's nice to have the number one. It's really, really nice. So I am gonna just use this one for the grass. But do you see how much more detail I can get in this grass when I use that number one? As opposed to over here, which it feels a little bit more blotchy. And nobody would notice but me, probably. <laughs> but it does make a difference. Do you see that? You can see a lot more white space between the grass here on this side as opposed to the grass here on that side. All right, the number one is very, very nice. I love this little, uh, this little brush and you know, it's great to have it when you need it. I know that for sure. <laughs> and look at how tiny it it pulls out of the the lines that color do you see that it's just it's just so dainty and detailed i love it i just i love this brush okay since i've got it in my hand i'm gonna add just a little bit more color to our shadow over here because as it dries it just lightens up a little bit And we're going to just give this a bit of an outline. Okay. So now we are going to take our branches and we're going to start putting them around. Okay. So we'll take our little branches here. And um, actually we got to put in our trees. Hello. Now that we have the sky in, let's put our trees in. So that's gonna be these two little ones from um, that mini foliage set. So remember I said I got the mini grass out of this one and then you could have used that for the background. Well, I'm gonna use these two trees right now too. So this is a very, very usable set. And actually they all are, but depending on what you're doing, okay. So I'm just grabbing a piece of masking tape and I'm just gonna rip it and put it right at the edge of my house so that my little tree does not stamp over the top of it and appear to be coming from the front. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna just zoom out a little bit. So I'm gonna take that N25 Okay, and I'm gonna stamp it off one time just because I want to, where did my stamp off paper go? Where are you? Okay, I'm gonna stamp it off once just to see how heavy that's gonna be and whether that is gonna work. And yes, it does. So I want it nice and heavy. And really, I probably only needed to ink the top of this since it's going behind. Okay, and if you wanted to put another one in there, you could. Now I'm gonna take that off and you can see I have a tree right behind, right behind my little house. And I was able to get that because I masked it off. And then for the other tree, I'm gonna use this one and we'll do that same thing. So we'll ink it once and then we will stamp it off and just see how well, what the impression is gonna be like, great. Sometimes um, if you have a lot of ink on your stamp, uh, you need to clean it off and then do go in with your color again. If you're hoping for a softer look, I, I want a lot of ink on this one, so I don't mind that, but just so that you're aware. Okay, so there's my little tree um, in the foreground. All right, so I want, I want just a bit. I'm feeling like this front bar part is really um, solid. <laughs> So I'm just gonna blend that out just a touch, just so it doesn't feel quite so solid on the edge. 
Okay, so we've got our trees in. Now we can put in our branches, okay? And just so you know, if you're not super into reeds, this could be your card by itself. So if you wanted to just cut this out on your die cut machine um, and mount it, you could totally do that, okay? So we're gonna put in our branches and then we'll erase all of our pencil marks. So let's take our first branch, which is gonna be this longer one, and I'm not gonna ink this whole thing. I'm just gonna ink part of it and make my way around the paper. So I'm gonna start here and just move along. And it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? You just want that basic wreath shape. And if you feel like, oh, that kind of went out of the lines, that's okay, just add something else and bring it right back in. Okay. And keep in mind, we've got some little spider webs up here, so we, we want to give them a place to attach. And we'll keep going just a little bit more down here. And then we will still put in the uh, little dashes, okay? Oops, I think I was off camera, darn. I'll just zoom out for the next one, okay? So we are going to now do the other branch. So this is the smaller branch. It's a little bit less, um, the lines are a little bit softer. So we're just gonna put some of these in and however we want to. And we can just bring in those edges if they kind of start wandering. Okay, you want it to be kind of um, messy in a way because it's kind of spooky, you know? It just, it, it, there's something about it that it, you know, it's, it's not perfect and it's like, I don't know, I can't even explain it, but it's okay to be kind of messy with these, okay? Karen, I see you, we will do purple, promise. All right, and I'm just gonna put a few more in here. Okay. Now, now we'll put in our little dash lines. We'll put in our little dash lines just right along the edge to complete our wreath. But I don't want to take the branches clear into here because it's going to take away from our little cemetery and everything. So just, um, you can if you want to, if you want it to kind of be behind uh, the branches, you know, feel free to do that, but you do not have to. I didn't want to take the chance that it would kind of come through and then you wouldn't be able to articulate kind of what was going on there. So I left this space empty so that you could peer through into the scene. Okay, and you can see I just added one more branch to that light area right there. Okay, I'll zoom back in and then let's erase our lines uh, before we do our little spider. So I'm gonna grab my pencil and I'm just going to begin to very lightly erase the lines. Now, if you can't see the lines, there's no need for you to have to go through and take the chance on your ink that it's not dry. Like this in here is not quite dry yet, so I don't wanna take my, the chance of um, spreading that ink around. So definitely make sure everything is dry before you begin to erase. Okay, I've got a little line in here that can go. You can't see the line really back there, so I'm not even gonna bother with that. Okay, and then in between the little micron dashes. I would suggest just doing this, if even if you can wait a little bit to erase everything, 
Um, I think it's going to benefit you more because do you see this? This just kind of um, came out of the lines because it wasn't dry. But I do have a sand eraser that we have now available on our website because I do this a lot and um, I thought, or we thought, you know what, others might also have this problem. So this is the Tombow Moner, Mono, Moner, Mono Sand Eraser and um, I just use this to take away some of those lines. And it's sand, so it's really just lifting up. Oops, and I just got another streak <laughs> it's really just lifting up the color off the paper you just really want to make sure that it's dry and I might even wait for that to fully dry before I try to do this again okay especially with the dark colors for some reason I just think they take a little bit longer to dry okay now we are going to put in our little spider webs. So I can already see he's not gonna have a big spot to hang on there. So I'm actually gonna take this branch, another one of these branches, and just stamp it kind of into, that was maybe a little bit far into, but you know what, we'll go with it, into the center so that we can put our little uh, spider web in here, okay? He needs something to hang on to. His web needs needs a little place to um, attach. So I'm just gonna take that and we're going to take that micron tip, that really, really, really light, thin micron tip, and we're gonna put in a big old spider web, okay? So you're going to have a focal point, okay? So I'm just gonna start right here and um, this is where he started his web, okay? So he started his web here. Now I want, I want to get at least three anchor points, okay? If I can get more than that, great. If I can't, then that's okay, but I need at least three. So I'm going to go and anchor one. We'll go down here, two, three, and then maybe I'll anchor over here, four. And because I have a little branch right here, I could anchor five, okay? So this is just a big web, okay? I'm gonna go from anchor one to anchor two, but I want you to pay attention. I'm gonna zoom in here because from the focal point, everything is gonna be pulled up. So, so if you were to imagine that I was lifting up a, a, um, a handkerchief and I grabbed it from the center and I pulled it up off the table, everything is going to be moving up to that little point that I'm holding, right? It's the same thing with the spider web. So everything is gonna be pulling up to that focal point right there. So when we do our cross lines, they're gonna be arched up. So they're gonna be arched up because they're being pulled up towards that focal point, that anchor, okay? And then we have another one. So I'm now connecting anchors two to three. And then an anchor three, two, where did I go here? Three, two, four. And then anchor four, two, five. And I'm pulling up. Okay. So I've got this big old spider web now. Do you see that? Okay. Just imagine that handkerchief, you're holding it up and that's where the tension is going to what you're holding on to, okay? So we'll put in another one. And let's see, where do we want to anchor this guy? Hmm. Let's put it, let's put it, hmm. I don't know, you guys, where do you want to put it? 
<laughs> there's so many spots and it really does have to be um, in a place that sort of looks cohesive. So I don't want to put it right up at the top because then I've, I've got them both right here. So I'm actually thinking of doing one over on this side, okay? I do kind of like the heaviness on one side of a wreath, which I've explained in another YouTube video. Um, asymmetry is always more pleasing to the eye. So um, one web, two webs, three webs, or um, you know, a heavier side is going to be better than if it was exactly symmetrical. So um, we're just going to put in maybe one big web, one over here, and maybe like a teeny one over here, and then we'll just have one spider, okay? So we'll take, let's see, hmm, let's bring this branch just with our pin. We can bring this branch down a little bit, okay? and give us another anchor. So we don't have to stamp again. We could just create a new branch on our own. So maybe I'll do one that's anchored right here. So I'm gonna do it that dot, okay? And I'm gonna do it going from here. I'm gonna go anchor up here. We'll anchor there. So that's two, three, and then we'll anchor here four, and then maybe we can just do one over here. So that's gonna be a wider little um, web, okay? So we're gonna go, ready? We're gonna go anchor one to two. So we're gonna do a arched line all the way up to the focal point, okay? So anchor two to three is gonna go here. And that's pulling so this is gonna be a really wide one okay <laughs> but we can make it work so it's gonna be wide and it's okay if they're a little bit wider it's not a problem and then we'll go up to that fourth anchor and notice I'm pulling up do you see that so that's gonna be just a different looking web and everything is being pulled up to that focal point at the top. And I'm just going to leave it at two. And then for my third element in the, um, in the wreath, I'm going to put in our little spider, okay? And he's just going to hang right down into our wreath. So I'll take my micron tip once again. And spiders can hang from anywhere on their web, okay? So I'm just gonna make him hang, let's see. Let's make him hang right down here. All right, so we have our line. And then I'm gonna take and just make a little, um, be careful actually where your fingers are going because you might leave some, <laughs> you might leave some streaks. So I'm just gonna take my practice paper here or my stamp off paper and just protect the image that I just did um, from my hand because my hand is super inky. So I'm gonna make a little arch like this and a little base. Okay, so put in your little arch in your base and actually I could probably zoom in on this guy. So that's our little spider body. And then I'm gonna give him two eyes. So I'm just gonna do two white circles with nothing in them. If you wanted him to look like a really friendly spider, you can put like little eyes, like little um, dots, like little eyeballs. So if I had this and I wanted him to look like a really sweet little spider, then I would put like little dots in here <laughs> because that would make him look more cartoony, okay? If I had little dots in there. But if you just leave them white, they look a little more spooky. Okay, so spiders, they have their they have double jointed legs. So when you do spider legs, they're double jointed like that. So that's how their legs are gonna look. They're gonna be double jointed. And then here's another example. Okay. 
Okay. So make sure you get that double joint in there. That's really, really important. That's what's gonna make him look very spidery. Okay, so I'll take his first leg and I'm gonna make him hang onto his web for dear life. Okay, same thing over here. So he's got his double joints for his first two legs. And then he's going to have some backup with his second two legs. All right, and then for his third and fourth, I think I want these to just kind of hang down. And then, like he's gonna catch himself when he falls. Okay. He's a little spooky. Eek, I wouldn't want him coming down on me. <laughs> Okay, you guys. Well, this is it. Was this kind of spooky? This is definitely a, a different type of tutorial for me, but I had a blast making it. What do you guys think? Are you going to give this a try? Um, who do you think you would send this to if you made it? Or who do you think would like it that you know? Does, um, is anyone just living for Halloween coming up? and you just can't wait to try a tutorial. <laughs> okay, oh my gosh, Karen, yes, thank you, purple. Thank you. What would I do without you, seriously? And Ruthann, thank you. You guys are so wonderful. Okay, so we can put in our purple. So I'm gonna use that, um, that 565 because it's kind of a blue purple and it mixes really well with um, the N25. All right, so if you want to, wanted to do just a monotone, make it like this, okay? Uh, Becky, I was going to do a small web on the left, but then I was like, my spider would actually be the third element, so then I would actually end up with four elements in the wreath, and I thought, you know what, let's just stick to the two. But good catch. Okay. Now, I'm gonna take that 565, where are you at? This 565, it's a blue, but it's a, it's kind of a violety blue, more of a purpley blue, okay? And then I'm gonna take my brush and mix a little bit of that 565 with the N25 just to start out. So I can just kind of go over this and then if I want to make it really purple I can add in some of that 636 so I'm just doing the same things that I was doing before I don't want to go over everything because it's just gonna make it feel uh, really thick and bulky and dark so what I'm gonna do is really focus on getting um, a wash kind of a wash of that color in here Okay, a wash of that color right up in here. Make sure you don't touch your branches and everything. All right, so we'll take that um, 636 and we will add this to our palette. So 636. If I did the purple alone, the, um, the contrast between the N25 and the 636 it's gonna be too much. So you really do need a middle tone, which is why I use that 565, okay? You need a middle tone in there. So we're gonna take that 636, we're gonna drop it in, and it's gonna look really, really Halloween-y and spooky. So I'm just kind of blending this in. And dab, 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 okay. A lot of this, you can get a, a very purpley looking sky just by pulling out some of this color in a wash. And that's really gonna give you that look that you're going for. 
So just a very light wash. A little purple over here. Do we like the purple sky? Yes, okay, we like the purple. Very cold, so Joel was right, as per usual. He was like, oh my gosh, you need some purple in there. I'm like, really? And he's like, oh yeah, no question, no question. And so, <laughs> you guys, looks like Joel, he knows what he's doing, you know? He's much more, he, he like I said, he is he has got the eye. He's much more creative than me. So I tend to kind of listen. Okay. Do you see how I'm getting this purpley look? Mostly with the wash. It's not, I'm not coming in harsh in the really dark areas. I'm really using um, the wash in the areas that were a little bit lighter. Okay. Well, great, cool. Looks like you guys like that purple, me too. Looks so good, looks really cool. I'm probably adding too much now, but I'm just, I'm having fun, so. <laughs> if it's not too much, it's not enough, you know? Okay. We could even draw this up a little bit. All right, everybody, you know, if you really wanted to get creative, you could even put some purple onto the house if you wanted to kind of reflect some of the sky into the house. That would be really pretty, too. We're on your... your little hill. So totally up to you if you want to do this with the purple. I really like it. Um, Joel was, of course, right. Shocking. <laughs> so you guys give it a try. I'm going to uh, flip the camera back over and we will say our goodbyes. So just a second here. Uh, well, maybe not. It doesn't want to do it now. Well, at least we got it on the first one, you guys. So <laughs> I guess I'm just going to uh, say our goodbyes from this angle. And um, I wish you guys a, a very, very wonderful evening. Just a recap of what we used, if you wanted to check them out um, on the website, artimpressions.com. I used the 5370. Okay, with the village that's 5370 I used the mini accents 2 this is 5390 the skew and it was these two little crosses that I used for the cemetery and then 5372 watercolor mini foliage um, I used several of these items these three in here and I could have totally used these as well and then the branches. So this branch and this branch, but I thought this one would actually be really neat, maybe up the side here or in the background. So you could kind of play with that and see what works for you. But um, you guys are just so wonderful. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook. Um, this tutorial will be uploaded onto YouTube. And um, I will see you guys next week at our normal time, Tuesday, 5 o'clock p.m. PST. And um, I love you all. Take care. Bye-bye.